Hey guys, what's up? My name is Riley. I'm a family ministry intern this summer, and I can't wait to hear this message with y'all. And I just want to say, don't forget to join a small group tonight at 7 p.m. I'll be there, so I can't wait to see y'all. And let's get into a time of worship now. So we're going to be starting a new series talking about justice. And I know in the last few weeks, we've kind of seen a lot of things on the news pop up about justice. And so how do we as Christians respond to that? How do we as teenagers, as adults, how do we respond to that in, in light of that? And so I, I started thinking about justice. And the first thing that comes to mind, of course, is superheroes, right? Uh, my favorite superhero, Superman, you know, one of the, the most powerful superheroes out there but even as i started thinking about that you also have to understand that even superhero had some weaknesses you know there was the kryptonite in his life not only that but also his other persona of clark kent you know he was timid he was shy there was you know it, the awkwardness of clark kent and you know a few weeks um a few months ago i told you that uh stefan and i started watching the marvel superhero movies uh, from beginning to end. And we want to update you and let you know that we did finish it. An amazing journey. Uh, but through that, one of the movies was Captain Marvel. And her, her story of being one of the most powerful superheroes in the Marvel Universe. But even she had some weaknesses. If you've never seen the movie, hopefully I'm not spoiling some things for you. But one of the things was that she 
couldn't remember who she was. She knew she had these powers. She knew um, all of this about her, but she just couldn't figure out her past. She couldn't remember it. And so as I started thinking about, um, about us, you know, and kind of what God wants to do and accomplish in our life, a lot of that starts with us knowing where we come from, kind of our past. And so one of the things that jumped right away is, of course, the creation story. I think a lot of us need to understand that God is trying to do something in us and through us, but we need to understand where we come from. We need to understand who we are. And so the first passage that jumps, um, jumps out right away is uh, in Genesis, Genesis 1, 26, 27, where it says, then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea the birds in the sky, over the livestock, and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. And I think it's important for us to understand that we are creation of God. That God specifically and intentionally created you and I. And I think when we realize that, it, it changes our perspective because so many times when we, when we look, and, and again, I, I know personally this is something that I struggle with, that when we see that we are created by God, a lot of times we, we look around at other, other creatures, other uh, um, people that God created as well, and we're, we're more interested in what they have and the things that we're lacking, as opposed to looking at God's creation ourselves and saying, God, you gave me this. You, you allowed me to have this ability. You allowed me to have this passion. You allowed me to have these struggles for a reason. So let me use what you've given me for your purpose. As opposed to looking all around and going, I wish I was like them. I wish I had that. I wish I was more like them. Because all you're doing is you're diminishing what God has done in you. You're diminishing what God has created in you. And so we need to understand that we resemble God, you and I. You resemble God, our creative, powerful, good, and just creator. But again, not only is it just seeing the things that God has given us, we need to value them and find worth in them. That God didn't make an accident when he created you. He made you for a reason. He gave you those things on purpose. So figuring that out, God, you gave me this. Let me find value and worth in it. Let me just not put it aside. Let me not just pout and complain as I go through my teenage years, my middle school and high school years, or my adult life. Let me keep pouting. No, no, no. Let me embrace it and move on and do what you've, uh, that you want to accomplish in me. But again, it's you as a human, but it's everyone else as well. They were created by God that you're human, which means that you were made in the image of God. But Paul in the New Testament takes this a little bit further. It's not that you were created in God's image, but he also lets you know that Jesus is the representation of the image of God. In Colossians 1 verses 15 and 17, it says, the son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation, for in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and, and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things and in him all things hold together. So not only are we made in the image of God, but Paul says that Jesus is the image of God. Therefore, even though we're imperfect, our reflection is God's image. How we go about our day, how we, how our lives are lived out is a representation of Jesus in everything that we do. And so again, understanding our past, understanding who Jesus is, changes who we are. Because again, Paul continues in Colossians talking about Jesus being the image of God and now we're called to be like Christ Paul kind of takes it a little bit further and tells us everything that Jesus went through and how that implies or how that applies to our lives. Colossians 2, uh, we'll pick it up in verse 6. It says, so then just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, 
and overflowing with thankfulness. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental uh, spiritual forces in the world rather than on Christ. For in Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. And in Christ, you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. In him, um, you were also circumcised with a circumcision not performed by human hands. Your whole self ruled by the flesh was put off when you were circumcised by Christ. Having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through your faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. When you were dead in your sins, in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us of all our sins, having canceled all charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us condemn and condemned us. He has taken it away, nailing it to the cross, and having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Paul says that something supernatural happens when we begin to trust Jesus in our life. It says our identities are transformed. It says that through Jesus, we now have a different identity. It also says that we go from death to life. We go from old to new because of Jesus. And because of that, our lives begin to be perfected, to be completed. And we start looking more and more like Jesus. And so, yes, we're human, but through Jesus, we can be transformed. And as again, as we start, finish, uh, start this series and start talking about justice, we have to understand that before we can go out and change the world around us, we have to let Jesus change our life first. You know, as you look at, at the Captain Marvel movie, and if you've seen it, you understand that her life changes when she has that freak accident and that energy comes uh, and changes her. And that kind of changes the course of her life. And in the same way, Jesus wants to do the same thing in your life. He wants to come in and change it, radically change it from the old to the new, give you a new identity. It's no longer who you used to be, but who you are now through Jesus. And because of that, it allows you a different perspective. It allows you to see the world, the people through God's eyes. But again, before we can go out and change the world around us, we have to let Jesus change our life first. And so that starts with you and God. And that's it. And having a conversation to figure out, God, what is it that you're trying to do in my life? Because unless, until you do that with God and have an honest conversation, you can't move on to perform the justice, to change the world around you that he, what, in what he wants to do. And so I would encourage you to have that conversation with God. Because once you have that conversation, it'll give you a clear understanding about what your mission is, what God created you and put you in this earth for. With Captain Marvel, she couldn't go on to figure out what her mission was, the thing that broke her heart until she realized, embraced her past, embraced who, um, it embraced who she was and her powers. And in the same way, you can't know what that mission is in your life until you embrace who God created you to be, until you embrace the, the change and the transformation that God is trying to accomplish in your life. And so I would encourage you to continue to have that conversation with God, start having that conversation with God. And as we continue to move on with this series, and seeing the justice that can be brought into the lives of people in this world, let's start with us. Father God, I thank you for this time. I thank you for the opportunity to be here, um, Father, and just be able to look into your word and acknowledge who you are and what you're trying to accomplish in our life. And so God, thank you for how you created me to be. I thank you for how you created the people watching this video to be. And God, I pray that you would speak truth into their life and they would see the mighty work that you're trying to accomplish in their life and through their life. That once they embrace 
who they are. God, that they would begin to embrace the mission that you created them for and the change that you're, um, that you're going to bring in this world through you. We love you and we pray this in your name. Amen. Thanks for watching with us, guys. And don't forget, again, to join a small group tonight, 7 p.m.